so the market just plunged we have all these issues let's talk about something phenomenal something just inspiring something that will hopefully bring a smile to your face and if you're not someone that is a Bible believer maybe it will give you just a, a reason to say maybe there is something to this old book and there's many many of these coincidences mm -hmm. <laughs> we know that they're not coincidences they're absolutely there for a reason but I just want to show y'all this one I might show you two but this one's just it's amazing and it's about Genesis 5 and most people skip Genesis 5 because it's just a genealogy chart it's just like this person begat this person this person begat that you know and you're like okay okay but there's something astonishing that connects them all together and prophesies pr pr it well it is it shows you that from Genesis our living God knew what would occur from then there's no other way to explain it and it's just it's phenomenal let's check it out all right so of course it starts with Adam Adam means man as in the first man that seems pretty straightforward enough, right? <laughs> then we have Adam's son. Adam's son was named Seth, which means appointed. When he was born, Eve said, For God hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And then we have Seth. Seth's son was Enosh which means mortal, frail, or miserable. It is from the root anash, to be incurable, use of a wound, grief, woe, sickness, wickedness. It was in the days of Enosh, not Enoch, we'll get to him, that men began to defile the name of the living God. Then we have Kenan. Enosh's son was named Kenan, Kenan, I guess, for which means sorrow. The precise denotation is somewhat elusive. Some study aids unfortunately presume it has an Aramaic root, meaning Canaan, but that's looking down from the heights of Moab, employed a pun upon the name of the Canaanites when he prophesied their destruction. Y'all stick with me. This is going to be like amazing. So then we have Canaan's son Mahel from which means blessed or praised and El the name of God thus Mael means the blessed God. Often Hebrew names include El the name of God as like Daniel or Nathaniel gift of God etc. Then we have Jared. Mahel's son name was Jared from the verb yarda meaning shall come down and then we have Enoch which most of you know about Jared's son's name was Enoch which means teaching or commencement he was the first of four generation of preachers in fact the earliest recorded prophecy was by Enoch which um, deals with the second coming of Christ then we have Methuselah. Enoch named his son Methuselah from a prophecy that he got. It comes from the root words muth and means death or to bring to and sh means to bring to so to send forth. Thus Methuselah signifies the death shall bring. Then we have Lamech. Methuselah's son's name was Lamech, a root still evident today in our English word, lam laminate, la <laughs> disparaging. This name is also linked to Lamech in Cain's line, who inadvertently killed the son of Tubal-Cain 
in a hunting insta incident. Then, of course, we have Noah. Lamech was the father of Noah, which is derived from the word from Nakam, meaning to bring relief or comfort. All right. All right, now be prepared for your mind to be blown. You ready? Let's put all 10 of those names together. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahal, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. Now as a sentence, man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching his death shall bring the disparaging comfort and rest. What it truly is, it's a summary of God's plan of redemption hidden here within the genealogy in Genesis. You will never be able to convince me that a group of Jewish rabbis deliberately contrived to hide the Christian gospel right here in the genealogy within their venerated Torah. There's just no way. The implications of this discovery are far more deeply significant than may be evident at first glance. It demonstrates that in the earliest chapters of the book of Genesis, God had already laid out his plan of redemption for the predicament of mankind. It is the beginning of a love story, ultimately written in blood on a wooden cross, which was erected in Judea almost 2,000 years later. This is also one of many evidences that the Bible is an integrated message system, the product of the supernatural natural engineering. This also punctures any presumptions of many who view the Bible as a record of an evolving cultural tradition, noble though it may be, it claims to be authorized by the one who only knows the end from the beginning. If you feel that that is amazing and phenomenal like I do, just wait. There's so much more that the carnal mind really can't even comprehend it. There's been some amazing people that have done decades of research on line by line with the verses of the Bible and what ends up showing up is nothing short of phenomenal. There's truly no explanation for it, for all of these numbers and the verses and all of these things to show up in the patterns that they do, not just random, but actually matching to the verses. And I'm just going to leave y'all with kind of just these. You could take a look at them. You can go to 3773.com. They have some amazing work. And then there's some other ones. I know a lot of people have had Bible codes and stuff like that. But some of those are just kind of made up. They just kind of find anything in anything. These are like mathematically proven to the... You, mathematicians are astonished. Scientists are astonished at what they're finding. It's actually converted many of them because of just... There's no way for this have just to been done accidentally because it matches not only the Hebrew, but the Latin and the English. That's what's astonishing. You know, if it was just the Hebrew and just the Torah, it's like, okay, well, maybe the Jews did conspire. <laughs> you, could, you could pass it off as that. But when you start 
seeing that it aligns not only with just the Hebrew, but the Greek and the English. <laughs> I mean, it's phenomenal. If you don't see this, this is 3-7 in the stars. 3-7 and 7-3 are like some phenomenal number that I can't explain it because I'm not some mathematician but y'all see that right there whenever I saw that I was like what that's 1776 I mean because if you think about it the majority of Christians came to the new world right I thought that was pretty phenomenal Thus saith the Lord, I am he, the only fountain from which flows all wisdom and knowledge, the source of all things. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. And before anybody gets like, oh, we're not supposed to mess with, is that gematria or whatever? It actually tells you in Revelation in order to find the secrets hidden to do that. I'll have to find that verse. But our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, came here to break the chains that we were under through this fallen world, sin. And there's only one way for salvation.